our last session we have seen like what are the prerequisites needed before installing SAP. So today we are going to see the installation of SAP. So before proceeding with the installation, you need to know where you have copied that software in which folder. Okay. So you need to go to that respective folder and then you need to select the installation master which is the folder. You need to double click on that and you need to double click on data units. Then you need to go into this folder, Windows x86-64. Under this folder you have seen so many things but as I told there is a tool which SAP installation will run with SAP INST. So SAP INST is the tool which install your SAP system. So just double click on SAP INST. Click on yes. So it will take you through the SAP installation process where it will go through all the phases and so almost it has like more than 20 phases so it will take around 6 to 8 hours or maximum 10 hours depending on your hardware like how much RAM, how much processor you have like it all depends on your uh, hardware okay um, say allow access here sometimes firewall blocks so you need to say allow access so once you click on that you will be getting a new pop-up window now here you can see that the computer name which we have kept right so then it's ECC like when I was showing I showed BACC ECC right so I haven't changed but for your understanding I have shown you okay but Keep in mind that that computer name should be lesser than 13 characters. Okay, so now here you go to the first uh, SAP application server app. Okay, if you go one drop down, you will see a MaxDB database. As I told, SAP installed on on the database. If you have the database installed, then only we can run, install the SAP. Otherwise, SAP won't install. Okay, it will look for the database. So if you go one more down, it shows central system. Under the central system, you will see the central system icon. So in our next um, um, session, like you know, you will be going to more in like what is instance, what is central. So I don't want to make it <coughs> uh, give it here that concept, but here just we are going with the asset solution. Okay. Now see it next. Now it will ask for the password. Basically, once the SAP is installed, you know the SAP creates two default users by name SAP Star and TDIC. So if you see, there are two users which SAP creates after the installation, which we are SAP Star and TDIC. So you have to give the password here and, and note it down somewhere or write it because if you forget this password then your whole time whatever you have uh, applied installing SAP will go vanish. So this is very important. So I am just giving the password like Zenit123 okay. So I am just noting down and I will save it there. So here is asking the agreement so you need to go and accept and then say next. This is end user license agreement because SAP is giving this software for you free of cost okay for three months so you need to accept that agreement and then you need to proceed. Now see if you see on the bottom what is going on it's, it's extracting Java so that means he need, it needs Java 
okay it needs database so and it's also for the environmental variables so all these things it will look if nothing if something is missing then what will happen it will throw an error saying that you do not have the java installed you do not have the database so, so this kind of issues might arise if you didn't uh, did the prerequisite so that's why i have already explained those things so now here is asking the password so as i said like i'm giving zenit one two three and same password here zenit one two three and say next so once you click on next it will go these are the five phases of this delivery tool and we are in the second phase of defined parameters okay choose option we have already selected that central system and it moves to the defined parameters where we have to define the parameters like are you going to install ABAP are you going to install Java both you know central instance so these are the parameters what is you know there's a concept called SID uh, which is nothing but your system identification which I explained in the system landscape uh, topic so SID is contains only three characters like dev or it could be QS quality or it could be PRV production so remember that SID is only contains three characters and which we need to give okay and instance number is starts with 00 and ends up to 99 so these are the parameters which will ask during the installation and you need to define those things okay so this is just to show you okay now what is asking he is asking the operating system user so this password is nothing but when you log into your PC, maybe you have created your own user, okay, with a password when you log into your PC, that password you have to enter here. So once you enter the password, it will proceed, okay. So make sure you are giving the right password. So it's checking the names for well-known groups. Okay, now here it will ask your system does not meet some prerequisite because I am installing in Windows 7. Okay, you could be installing on Windows 7 or Windows 8, but here it's asking that you need to install in Windows 2003. So no need to worry about that since I already installed so many times. Okay, it installed successfully. You just hit no. Okay, and it will proceed further so it check all the values it will check the database instance and So by default, since this is a predefined uh, software, so it take it takes as predefined like it will take the you know uh, like SID it will take like NSP because this is a predefined software and the instance it will take by default zero zero. So in a company, you have a real software and like you have to assign and you have to define which SID you are giving, what instance number you are giving, okay, whether it is central instance or not, okay. So these are the very important things like you have to remember and you have to, you know, know about that. So see here, as I said, like these are the final step summary and then you have to see heck it execute, okay. So here we have given, uh, I accept, okay, then I told that SID by default is taking NSP, okay, since this is a trial software and it's installing on your C drive and you have given a master password it's a local installation since we are doing in the standalone PC or if you have any domain you can change it by clicking on it okay so so you have given the OS password as what you log into the system you have the database okay and already installed and so these are some uh, okay prerequisites so CPU is using like I have like core uh, two, so it's using the two CPUs of mine, and it's using this kind of input output buffer cache. Okay, number of sessions, hundred. 
So these are general parameters for before it proceeds the installation. So if you see the central instance here is 0, 0, okay. So in the company, if you want, you can define any other instance number as per the requirement. Okay, and host name is nothing but your computer name as said, right? Then it's ECC and these are all the unpack archives which it will collect from your uh, software and it will uh, extract those uh, exports, okay? So here, I hope you understand this concept of installation like how I proceeded with it, okay? So you no need to check any box here, okay? Just say next and it will proceed with your instruction. So if there are almost 23 phases and you know, uh, it will take a six or eight hours, as I said, depending on your um, environment. So I hope you have uh, understood like how to install SAP. So you try, uh, definitely you can able to install SAP successfully. So in our next uh, session, we will be going to see what are the post installation activities recur after the SAP installation. So you will also see once it's done successfully, you will get the, you know, uh, message like this. If you see here, it's all the phases have been completed successfully. Execution of service SAP. Okay, so this kind of uh, message you will get once you install successfully. Okay, so. Thank you so much for attending my session. Bye.